If you're like most of us right now, you've probably used Zoom way more than you ever thought you would. The last time we were all talking about Zoom was in 1999 and it was a PBS television show. My, how the times have changed. Now, even if you haven't used Zoom for work, you've probably attended a birthday call, had a virtual happy hour, or maybe even joined a community meeting over Zoom. And because Zoom is the tool that everyone is using right now, and many of us for the first time, we're going to give you a 10 minute comprehensive rundown of this video chatting software. In this video, we'll show you some secret tips and tricks that'll turn you into a Zoom pro. So let's dive in. Here's a crazy number for you. In December 2019, Zoom had just 10 million daily participants. Today, that number has skyrocketed to 300 million daily users. That is absolutely insane. So with all those users, you're probably wondering, how much do I have to pay to use Zoom? Here's the best part. Zoom's free version allows you to host up to 100 participants and up to 1,000 participants with the paid version. Now you can do everything we talk about in this video with your free Zoom account. We'll give you some super fun tips you might not know about, like how to look better on video chat, use some keyboard shortcuts to speed up your workflow, and effectively share your screen. This platform really is an incredible resource, so let's get into the 10 tips for using Zoom like a pro. Number one is manage participants. First things first, once you've got people in your Zoom meeting, you've gotta manage the virtual chaos. It's like herding cats, only the cats talk over each other and have access to lots of buttons. So you can click manage participants to mute your participants on or off individually, and it's the same with their video. You can turn it on or off. The more option allows you to add profile pics for participants, but here's the most important button you wanna keep in your hosting back pocket. The mute all button that you see down here right above the chat. This is essential for big meetings where you don't wanna be interrupted. Number two is find your light. So here's a quick lesson in lighting. In order to look well lit on camera, you want to avoid backlight like this. See how it blows everything out? You also want to avoid side light like this because it will stretch across your face horizontally and create weird shadows. The key is to face the light source, go to the light, like this. Big and bright windows are great for this and you'll want to soften up that light by adding a thin curtain or something that breaks up the light a bit. The second lesson in lighting is to think angles. Do yourself a favor and elevate your laptop to go above eye level so that you're looking up and your face is correctly in proportion. If your laptop is on your lap like this, your stomach and chin are going to be the biggest things in the camera. That's because whatever is closest to the camera will seem bigger and whatever is furthest from the camera will seem smaller. So just remember that rule of thumb when you choose the best angle for your face. Number three is touch up your appearance. Here's another vainglorious tip, but as you'll see, it's pretty cool. If you don't have time to do all the things in tip number two, or you wanna take your camera persona to the next level and add this to tip number two, you'll have improved your appearance in just a few seconds. First thing you can do is go to settings, video, my video, touch up my appearance, and then set the slider for the degree of smoothness you want on your face. It's pretty cool. I've basically turned into Brad Pitt. The other neat thing here is for our night owls. You can adjust for low light by clicking that setting and then using the auto or manual slider to find the desirable adjustment. Number four, sound better. All right, now that we've gotten through all the fun video tricks, let's go over a quick practical audio one. This is how you enable the original audio of your own microphone. Now you might be thinking to yourself, wait, aren't I always using the original audio? But the answer is no, no you are not for all sorts of smart people, compression types of reasons. But if you want that original audio, which will give you a higher fidelity sound, do this. Click the microphone icon, up arrow, audio settings, advanced, check box for original audio. Just be aware that this will use more of your computer's bandwidth and processing power, so pro tip, save it for special occasions, like speaking with someone who's hearing impaired or when you wanna to propose to your Bumble date over Zoom. Hey, no judgment, good luck. Number five is transcribe your meeting. Transcribing your meeting is great, especially if you don't wanna pay attention to the whole thing. Simply press record and then end the recording once it's done to get your MP4 file. Next, you're going to transcribe with a program like otter.ai. So just hop over to that website where you'll get 600 free minutes of transcription every 31 days for up to three files. On the otter.ai dashboard, you'll click import and drag and drop your file into otter.ai. Another pro tip is to get the audio only of your MP4 so it takes less time. After clicking done, you can click on My Conversations and your transcribed video will be right there for you to peruse and share. Number six is the best shortcut key. And it's sad that we've gotten to this point in our digital society, but it's true. It's a pain to have to click that mute and unmute button all the time. There, I said it. So to make that super easy, just press and hold spacebar to unmute yourself and then simply release the spacebar to mute yourself again. Did I just change your life? 
Thought so. And if you wanna add more shortcuts, just go to Settings, Keyboard Shortcuts. Here's the best thing about this shortcuts dashboard. If you wanna change any shortcut, you can just click on the tab under the shortcut column and change it. Boom, just like that. Number seven is share screens. Here's how to share your phone screen or multiple screens, and it's super helpful. To share your phone screen, just click share screen and click the iPhone iPad option and then click share again. Follow the directions on your phone for screen mirroring and then you can see your phone screen being shared on Zoom. You'll be able to use any Zoom tools on your phone screen, which is super handy. To share multiple windows, click share screen again and then press the control key and select all the windows you wanna share. You'll see what you selected highlighted in green, telling you that they're currently being shared. This allows you to just go between whatever windows you've selected so that you don't have to keep going back to your desktop. That way your messy desktop can stay your little secret. Number eight, grab people's attention. This tip is great for when you're sharing your screen and you wanna help your audience follow along. Just hover your mouse at the top of the Zoom screen when you're sharing to open up all the sharing tools. Then click Annotate, where you can do things like click Spotlight to highlight your mouse as it goes across the screen, insert text on the screen, draw on the screen, along with a whole bunch of other annotating tools. Number nine is make people wait. Virtual waiting rooms. I bet you never would have thought of those if you were designing a video chatting software. But this is really a super useful tip for when you're holding large meetings with multiple guests or perhaps creating live stream content with guests. Either way, you're illuminating Zoom bombing. Within the Zoom profile section, click on settings over on the left-hand side. The first setting will allow you to toggle waiting rooms on. Now, when someone wants to join your meeting, they'll get a message telling them to wait. And then you'll see a message at the top of your screen prompting you to let them in. Or you could always just click to see who's in your waiting room and not let in that arch enemy of yours. Number 10 is give nonverbal feedback. This tip is like reactions times 100. Click settings again from the Zoom profile and then toggle nonverbal feedback on. When you're in a meeting now and click on participants, your chat will have gained all these amazing new buttons. All your participants can now respond by clicking things like yes or go slower. It's gonna change your entire meeting experience. And that does it for our 10 favorite Zoom tips. If you found this video useful and want more amazing tips and tricks for your work life, subscribe to the AppSumo YouTube channel and click that beautiful bell icon and you'll get notified every time we drop a new video. All right, so what are you waiting for? Create that Zoom account, find your lighting, and host your first meeting. If you're feeling adventurous, we challenge you to share your screen or transcribe an entire meeting. Whatever you choose, try implementing one new tip into your next video chat, and you'll have upped your Zoom game. Comment below to let us know what tips you've incorporated or if you have any handy tips yourself. We reply to every comment and wanna hear from you. As always guys, thanks so much for watching this video. We hope you found it super helpful and feel like a Zoom pro now, and we'll see you next time.